You are looking at God in the flesh. See, y'all scared to say that. This is the most satanic thing in the church, and many Christians are following after it. What would you say is the most satanic thing that you see happening in the church? And then what would you say about anyone that calls himself a Christian who also follows after those things, who participate in those things, who promote those things, who sanction and are satisfied by this thing that is the most satanic thing in the church? What would you say about that? And what would you say about those people? And I'm going to show you what it is in just a minute. But first, let's deal with the word satanic. Really, what we want to focus on is just the suffix I see the ick part. What that means, it, it is something that relates to, of, or has the characteristics of. And so when we say satanic, we're saying something that has the characteristics of Satan or is relating to that's, that is similar doing what Satan wants to do, doing what Satan's doing, what he's always been doing. And so when we think about it, when we go to the very first time that Satan shows up on the scene, what did he do? Where was it happening? Well, let's go to the garden in Genesis 3. And remember, the Bible says that he is more cunning, more crafty than any beast of the field. The Bible says the serpent was more crafty than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, and look what he says, this is Satan's design. Now, there's a purpose for him doing this. And we'll talk about it in a second. But he says, indeed, has God said to you, you shall not eat from the tree. So the first thing that Satan wants to do, the most satanic thing that he wants to do involves him attacking the word. It brings about the goal that he wants to accomplish, which is to move people away from God or more specifically, the knowledge of God. We're going to talk about that important thing to understand because this is where people fall and they take part in it. As a matter of fact, they promote it. But he says, did God indeed has God said. So Satan wants to attack the word. Is that really what he said. And then the woman responds with the word, but Satan comes back and says, no, for God knows you will not die for God knows you shall eat of that in that day and your eyes will be open and you will be like God. And so he distorts what is uh, understood to be in the word to get you to change the meaning. Why? To get you to be like him, not like God, or to think you're trying to be like God, or to have the power of God, but really you're trying to be what Satan's trying to be, better than what you are. And Satan understands that his whole goal is to move you away from him so that ultimately in eternity, you can be with him, not him, but Satan. So we're not limited to the, to the Bible, but God expands sometimes through the Holy Spirit coming through a teacher, bring, bringing more uh, bringing more. So one verse says this, but then there can be more that God adds on for more understanding. So I want to be clear. I want to be abundantly clear. If you exceed from what is written, you are playing into the hands of what is satanic. Satan wants to exceed from the text. He wants to get you to start listening to and following what is not in the Bible. That is satanic. There are certain instructions that are definitely not in scripture. You know, when people say, if it is not in the word, I wouldn't believe it. It's the craziest thing you can ever say. You are going to see more and more people, so-called preachers, who are going to get up before the people and tell you and can try to convince you that the word of God is not as important. As a matter of fact, they're bringing new revelation. There are all these different ways to get you to distrust what the word of God is. As a matter of fact, it's not a new thing. Again, we saw that in the garden with the very first people. We saw him showing up and doing that in the garden. Then we see him doing the exact same thing with who? With Jesus, the, you know, the one who gives us the word, the one who this book is centered about. In Matthew, he's taken up to be tempted by the devil, that is Jesus. And so we look and see what he says in verse three. He says, if you are the son of God, command these stones to become bread in order to use things for your benefit. But what does Jesus do? He uses the word as his defense. Then the devil does what he knows to do, which is to distort the word. In verse five, the devil took him into a holy place and said, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down for it is written, for it is written. He understands that obviously the Lord knows the word. He will command his angels concerning you. And so what does Jesus do? Well, Jesus then turns around and gives him the, the scriptures. 
what are we supposed to do? We are supposed to use the word to grow in the word, to grow closer to the Lord. That is what the devil does not want you to do. So if he's going to do that with uh, Adam and Eve in the garden, and if he's going to try to do the exact same thing with Jesus, what do you think he's going to try to do with the rest of us? 85% of Jesus' life, he was out of order. The reason why he can say something like that, the reason why they can say foolish things like that is because they know, Satan knows, that people are not going to push back because they have decided to move away from the word. Psalm 119, 11 says, your word I have treasured in my heart. Some versions may say hidden in my heart. Treasure is acceptable uh, understanding as well. Matter of fact, it probably makes it even clearer that I might not sin against you. The only way that you can sin is if you disregard the word, meaning you have not treasured, you've not kept it. We sin either intentionally or unintentionally, but either still, it's a perversion and a diversion away from the word, moving away from what God says and not holding on to it. But remember, Paul says that all scripture that is the written word that we have is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness so that the man of God or woman may be adequate, equipped for every good work. Well, what does the enemy want you to do? Leave away from that. Move away from that. Why? So that you can live your best. As a matter of fact, so you can even discount sin. I'm going to say something folk won't say. You, you, you can go to hell, but it can't be for sin. Buckle your seatbelt. Let me say something that's really strong. People do not go to hell for sin. Jesus already paid for that. To say something so foolish as sin doesn't send you to hell, the reason why people go to hell is because of sin. It's an absolutely silly statement, but what it does is it's designed to get you to think lightly of your sin and to be okay with it, which who is after that? Well, the devil's after that. Could it be Satan? Now, you need to understand this, that Jesus brings this up, and I use this passage because it covers a lot of different things that are vitally important. Jesus brings up the seed and the soil. The seed in Luke 8 represents the word. The word of God. Nothing wrong with it. It's perfect. It's powerful. The problem is it's the heart that lands, that the seed it lands on, which is the soil, and it must land on good soil. But I want you to notice something about that he's that he says in Luke chapter 8 about what the devil's desire is to do. Look at verse 11. Now the parable is this: the seed is the word of God. Those beside the road are those who have heard what? Heard the word. Then the devil comes and takes away what? What does he come and take away? The word, the very thing that you have heard from their heart. Why does the devil want to take away the word? Remember the word that he says, I've hidden in my heart that I may not sin against you. Why does he want to do so? He says from their heart so that they will not believe. But this word pistosantes is to mean be believing. Bad English, but it's helpful to understand what the devil doesn't want you to do because all of us as Christians are categorized as those who are believing. And how can the, the enemy keep you from believing to take away the word? Without the word, you cannot be believing. And you can hear the word, you can understand, you can have it with joy, you can even believe temporarily. But if the word is not in your heart, and what he means by that is this understanding, the tenets of our faith. And without that, you can listen to a whole host of things by anyone, it can sound good, sound profound, but it's clearly satanic. It is from the pits of hell. More money, say more purpose. More purpose. Say what you mean, more money. more money. What I found out studying scripture is gluttony is Satan's favorite sin. Jesus never reached his potential. Now, the reason why you can listen to that and not be bothered, why some people can't be bothered. Here's the good news. If you hear any of these things that we've heard thus far and it bothered you, that's a good thing. If you hear it and it doesn't bother you and you say things like, well, let God deal with them. Don't judge them. Don't bother them. Or that makes sense. Well, I understand what he's saying. I get it this way or that way. This is the reason why you might be the one that needs to hear this. The reason why you do so is Jesus brings up a statement about his sheep. He says that the sheep follow him. Those of us who are true believers, we follow him. And he tells us why we follow him. He says, because we know they know his voice. But look at verse five. Verse five says a stranger or a strange voice. They simply will not follow. It says never, ever, ever follow. We're not going to give any kind of credence to it, any validity to it. Well, I can see what he means in a certain light. No, he says a stranger. They will not follow, but will flee from him. Why? Because they do not recognize the voice of the strangers. If you are going after strange voices, 
things that deviate from the word of God, faulty teachings, and they appeal to you. They make you feel, they satisfy you. They make you feel comfortable in your heart. It's likely because you are not one of his sheep. You need to take warning, take heed. That's why Paul says, examine yourself to see if you do indeed have Christ. Why? Because if you have Christ, you won't go after these strange teachings. Remember, the Bible says that in the latter times, people will fall away from the faith. This is not having faith, the verb believing. This is from the faith, the tense of the faith, the things that we know, you know, the word of God. Why? These are doctrines of demons. He said they will pay attention to deceitful spirits and doctrines of demons, you know, telling people that Jesus did not fulfill his purpose or uh, Jesus didn't fulfill his potential. 85% of his time, he was out of order. Uh, we don't have to really study the word like that. Spending too much time, those aren't things that we ought to do. As a matter of fact, too much theology is a danger. Is it dangerous to study too much theology? In my opinion, yes. Those are things that come from the enemy. Even people who unbeknownst to themselves might be succumbing to those things. That can happen. And it's possible somebody might be listening to those things. It's possible that a true Christian can hear those things temporarily. Because again, as Mike Titus also said, you can be saved and stupid. Tweet that. You can be saved and stupid. But you're not going to stay stupid. You're going to eventually move away from those things. Eventually you're going to, you're going to, your head and your heart are going to have some issues. And then you're going to run away from those things like Jesus says. But what people are moving away from are, are the teachings, the tenets of the faith, all the things that the Bible has told us from Genesis to Revelation, all the things that are pertinent for our salvation and our walk. The demons or Satan, satanic things that are happening in the church will move you away from that, which is why Paul makes this statement. He says in 2 Peter 4, I'm sorry, 2 Timothy uh, 4, 2, he says, preach the word. He says to reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering, with great teaching, with great patience and instruction. Why? Because the time will come, which is now and has been here, that people will not endure sound doctrine, sound teaching. And instead, they'll find someone to teach to them, to give to them what they want to hear. And I want to give you this, I want to leave you with this, because this is vitally important. People who oftentimes want to yield to what they think is the move of the spirit and their understanding, these are the very people who are the most egregious violators. Why? Because they don't want to be held to the standards of the, of the scriptures, nor do they want to hold themselves or live by the scriptures. Rather, they want to have some power. They want to be just like what, what the devil, what Satan is telling Eve in the garden. You want to be like God. You want to be called to call things that are not as they were. You want to be able to move in the spirit, you want to impart things. You want to uh, prophesy things. You want to be blessed. You want to heal people. You want to be healed. You want to be known as someone who's full of the spirit rather than someone who's known uh, for being full of the word, which was given to us by the spirit. I submit that's the most important thing. But those very same people need to go back and read Second Corinthians chapter 10, but read it correctly. He says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. Now, this is where they think that we're going to use some sort of spiritual power uh, to, to go and fight and do battle with the devil. No, we're not fighting against the devil. He says, for the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. Well, what could that possibly be? We are destroying speculations and every lofty thing raised up against the knowledge of God. And we are taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Pay attention to what he says is being raised up and what we're going to fight with. He says we are going to we're going to uh, we are destroying every high thing that has been raised or being raised against the what? Against the knowledge of God. And so when you see in the Bible someone either departing, falling away, leaving, they are what? Leaving the faith. The tenets of the faith, what we know, the knowledge, James 5, 1 Timothy 4, even Paul in 2 Timothy 4 says, I have fought the good fight. I have kept the faith. And that's what we are trying to do. Bring those things, taking captive every thought. Uh, remember, our battle is with what we understand, what we know, the word of God. And if anyone that wants to move you away from that, it is satanic. And so when you ask yourself this question, who in the world would it be that would want you to move away from the word of God? Even though he or she is dressed nice and they say it nice and it makes sense to you, 
who would want to do that? Who could it be? Who could it be? I just can't imagine who. Could it be 